Hey there, Seguro golfers. A very Merry Christmas to y'all. And today we're looking at Ben Hogan's grip and everything you need to know about it. Ben Hogan had a very unique grip and it's not one that's typically taught in golf instruction today. There's a lot of similarities we're going to find in his grip, but some key differences in how it impacts your golf swing and your ball flight. Part of the reason Ben Hogan's swing was so unique is because of his grip. In fact, the grip influences your swing in a whole bunch of ways, but we're going to take a look at how his grip influenced his swing. Let's kick this off by learning the Ben Hogan grip. So the Ben Hogan grip is as follows. You want your lead hand facing the target and you want a diagonal line with the grip going from the base pad of the first finger to just under the pinky pad like this, but a little bit more of a diagonal than what I typically prescribe. I like this angle. He's got it more into the palm pad right here. So you want to fold the fingers first once you've positioned your hand correctly. And once you fold the fingers, fold the thumb over. That forms a crease. And that crease will point just through your right ear area and the thumb will just be resting about one o'clock or just off the center of the shaft there. This is pretty normal, pretty standard, but things get weird with the trail hand. The trail hand is the power hand and the way Hogan took it is he had it in the fingers, all the fingers, practically straight down here. So all the base pads, your fingers, folding those fingers first. And you're going to overlap if you're doing it his style. You can also interlock either way. But we're going his way. So you want to fold the fingers first and it has to be straight, not diagonal. So you're folding the fingers first. And once you've folded those fingers, you want to fold the thumb over top of that lead hand, thumb. So you're covering up that thumb. This is where it gets different though. He prescribes that the V, the crease right here, in your trail hand points through your nose. That is different than what is commonly taught. Usually you get people saying, we need parallel Vs. I like parallel Vs. I like the feeling of having that. But Hogan is different. Remember, he was a hooker, so he's doing everything he can in his power to eliminate the hook. One of the reasons he was able to do that is the positioning of the trail hand. By getting his hands placed in the club this way, his way, he was able to keep the club face open a lot longer than somebody with a stronger grip. So that allows the ball to start out to the right or prevents the club face from rotating a whole lot through impact. If you're looking at my thumb here, you can see that's pointing right through my nose on that trail hand thumb. So this right hand, this trail hand for me, is very over, much more over than what I would typically do. Now this position, if you have your hands on the club like that, I feel like no matter what I do, that ball is going to go to the right because the face is so open. Remember, the club face determines the start direction of the golf ball. Now that you've taken the Hogan grip, this will give you some insight into what's going through his mind when he's swinging the club, what he's feeling. So that trail hand is the biggest feel difference for me. That is so weird. But when I take the club back with his hands, theoretically his hands, I feel like I've got a ton of wrist hinge here. And I get that natural Hogan-like cupping at the top. Look at that. It's because of the grip. The grip determines a lot of your golf swing. So if you're trying to get to the Hogan-esque position, you need to look at the grip first. Look at that wrist. Look at that. That is all from his grip. I haven't tried to manufacture a thing. I just took the club to the top. Look at this as well. The connection between the bicep and the side, the tricep side right here. It's glued because of the way he has his arms positioned at a dress, tucked in, and because of the way this hand, the trail hand, is over top and that V is pointing through the nose. So critical for the Hogan type of position. Look at that. It doesn't get any more Hogan than that, does it? It's in the grip. There's a disclaimer here though. If you're trying to imitate Hogan, you need to have his grip. But for most of us golfers, most golfers are slicers. Most amateur golfers are slicers, so they're used to hitting the ball and it's going way off the planet to the right for the right-handed player. So it's like, whoo, see ya. Or you've got the dreaded push slice, which is even worse. Ball starts right and goes way off the planet even more. If you have a Hogan-style grip, 
you need to understand the club face is not going to rotate a lot. And what I mean by that is if you are not somebody who releases the club hard, you keep a quiet club face through impact like me, then you're going to find that as you hold off here, keep the hands quiet through impact, that club face is going to point way out to right field. Ball is going to go starting to the right. So you have to be wary of the fact that this is going to start the ball way out to the right. It's a very weak grip with the trail hand. It's keeping the club face open longer. But there is a tremendous benefit to this grip, and I've discovered this after playing around with it. What I notice, and you've heard me talk about this in previous episodes about hitting hard with the trail arm, and the concept of Hogan wanting to have tons of right hand at impact. He wanted, what, three or five or ten, however many you want. Hit as hard as you want with that trail hand once you start the downswing correctly. And I often wonder, like, I know the trail arm is the power arm, but if I try and hit really hard with the trail arm, like if I try and really push hard, one thing that happened for me was the club face would shut down quickly, and then I hit the ball to the left, but I hit it really far because I hit it so hard with that trail arm punching. It's that punch motion, the power arm. So Hogan was on to that power concept. But here's where it gets interesting. Once I took the Hogan style trail hand grip, getting that V on the trail hand pointing through my nose, I can leverage the power of the trail arm now because the club face, remember how I said it stays open if you don't do anything with it? Well, if I hit as hard as I want with a trail arm after starting the downswing correctly, it's going to be square. Actually, I have no choice but to hit it hard. That's why you can get so much power from doing this. The ball is like going 10, 20 yards further because you're hitting it as, with the wrath of God every time. If you don't hit it with the wrath of God using Hogan's grip, the ball is going off to the right because the face is staying open. So you have to hit it hard with the trail arm. And some of you can relate to this. Um, Hogan and I have this in common. I think he was a left-handed writer, but a right-handed golfer type of thing. And we were similar in that way. So I can relate to wanting to hit hard with this arm, as hard as possible. A lot of people like to pull through with the lead arm, but hitting with this arm is actually your power arm, like you'd hit a hammer into a nail, sledgehammer into something, you'd use that arm. It's really natural to do. Well, his grip sets you up to do that, but you have to be very careful. You have to make sure that you do hit hard with the trail arm. And I might even hit shots that miss this net because the face can be open unless I hit it hard enough. So I'm gonna hit a shot here using the Hogan grip. So there's the, there's the positioning of the hands on the club. Fold the fingers, thumb, good. And we're talking about grip pressure. You want your hands to feel alive. It's gotta be secure, but not like you're showing me knuckles, white knuckle or anything. It's gotta be secure. It's not wobbling in your hands. The grip is extremely important. You must grip the club absolutely correctly, per Mr. Hogan. So, Get the trail hand on here. No trigger finger, by the way. You have to have all the fingers together. Fold that hand over. There's my V pointing through my nose. And it scares me because I know how hard I have to hit with the trail arm to do what Hogan did. So I'm going to do some practice swings so I can feel the club face here. And by the way, when you hit hard with the trail arm, the harder you actually will turn the club over through impact. So that release of the club is not me trying to rotate the hands. It's actually a result of me hitting so hard with the trail arm, the club face shuts down. So you get into that same Hogan-like follow-through. Check this out. Look at that follow-through. I kind of Hogan-esque release is due to the grip, hitting so hard with the trail arm. Very interesting, I think. So here we go, Hogan shot one. Please hit the target because grip changes are not for the faint of heart. I gotta hit this so hard with the trail arm. This is a five iron. Wow. I mean, you have no choice but to hit it hard 
You're swinging so hard to keep the face from opening. But at the same time, this allows you to hit it farther and not really worry about where it's going. You know that if you hit it hard, it's going to go to your target. But you've got to hit it hard. You've got to hit hard with the trail arm. I don't even know what my swing looks like. It feels so weird when you do a grip change like that. So your awareness of where the club face is, your awareness of where your hands are on your body completely changes. So you, I don't even know if my swing's gonna look right here, but it feels powerful. And that's what I felt when I was on the range trying this out. And then I went and played a round of golf doing this and ball was going longer. And I wasn't, I wasn't really losing accuracy but my arm did feel tired at the end because I was hitting so hard with the trail arm. Here we go, number three. Okay, another benefit to this grip, just thought about this. The more this trail hand is over top, the more open the face is. But also in the downswing, when you start getting into the downswing, you got to get to a point where the club continues to the ball like this, not falling too much and not going over. Well, at the top, because of this trail hand being so weak, no, pointing through my nose with that crease, if I start the downswing correctly and I hit hard as I want the trail hand, the club goes directly to the ball so it doesn't fall you're not you're not chopping by any means you can't chop you actually got to hit it like a hammer and a nail so if you ever wondered how some golfers can describe hitting a golf ball like hitting a hammer into a nail and you've always wanted to do that it's this concept right here you don't hit the golf ball by driving the nail into the ground the nail is on the the nail is here so the clubs coming in hitting the nail to the wall this way so that is another thing to think about You've got all this loaded trail arm, and you're going to hit that back of your trail. You're going to hit that palm of your trail hand into the back of the ball. That's that feeling. It comes from this Hogan style of grip, and you have to do it if you want to hit your target. Whew! Just raked that ball raking it in. Wow. Very powerful. So food for thought here, Segudo golfers, as you look at your grip, I don't recommend doing this grip, though you can do it. I, I think that after a while, I get tired. My arm gets tired from trying to hit so hard. This trail arm will fire on its own. You don't have to think about it with other grips, but with this one, because the face is so open, you've actually got to consciously fire it to get the face to square at impact. Whereas, I'm one of those guys who prefers just tuck in the arm, leave it this way. Once it's tucked in, I've got the Hogan arms here. By the time I get to the top of my backswing, the arm is loaded. By the time I get to impact, the arm naturally fires and the face is square or just slightly open so you can start to the right, curve it back with that push draw. And on the way through, I keep the club face square. I don't really think about releasing hard and I'm very consistent with that. But if you're one of those people that's a Hogan purist, and you want to know why, if you want to know the whys behind what he, what he wrote and what he did and why he did that, take this into consideration. He was a hooker. He wanted to prevent the hook. He wanted to keep the club face open longer to keep the ball out to the right. And he even preferred playing a fade slightly, I heard, with irons. So you just got to be aware of what he was trying to do if you're going to put it into your game, if that makes sense. That's what his game was built for. He built his grip to suit his game. Every change you look at in your swing should be based on making a change to ball flight. So do you like your current ball flight and are you having consistently clean contact? And you gotta have consistently clean contact first and then we start working on the ball flight. So if you don't like your ball flight and you wanna make adjustments, you can do some grip changing, but ultimately I don't recommend just changing your grip for the sake of changing your grip. Try this out if you want 
It's a lot of fun. I think you'll hit a lot of shots off to the right in the beginning as a response to you're not used to firing the trail arm, but it is a lot of fun going out there just ripping it with the wrath of God all day. And then you go home and you're like, man, I feel like a new man. I just swung as hard as humanly possible for 50 golf balls straight and I don't feel like I, I don't feel tired. <laughs> so Ben Hogan has a really, really interesting grip. Something to take away for this Christmas as you're going out there and you're spending some time at home and you're, a lot of you have snow, I know. So you can check this out. You try that out, look at the top of your backswing and, and see what you think. All right, so good dog offers. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy your Christmas with your families. And as I mentioned before, if you want to learn what I'm doing here, then check out my website, Segudo.golf. It's a complete golf game improvement program, 10 bucks a month to play the best golf of your life. Would love to see you in class. And I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Thanks again for watching. Like this video, comment below if it helped you to become a better golfer. If you want to talk about more Hogan, comment below as well. Have an awesome week.